I'm sure you have, you have been monitoring from afar, but when you fell back into your own country, how was the country like? Well, from the perspective of our conversation, it was a, a real shock, a real letdown. Because here I was coming from Tanzania, mm -hmm. this progressive, intellectually active engagement between everybody, mm -hmm. from the government to the university people to the party, Roka Party, they were all involved in progressive ideas. I come to Ghana, the University of Ghana, and there was a whole different political tone. We were on an IMF program, mm. and uh, structural adjustment of a sort before structural adjustment in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but the university campus, which in Dar es Salaam was part of the fresh thinking, new ideas, at Legon, where the most conservative people leading the academic culture of the university. And there was no discussion at any level seriously of any progressive pan-African ideas like I was used to in Dar es Salaam. So it was a complete, complete shock. In Kumar's Ghana. It was post in Kruma. Yes, but this is in Kumar's Ghana. Uh, absolutely. And, I, mean, and I, I was shocked. You would have thought that that should rather be the harbinger for all of the conversations absolutely. that are relevant, absolutely. even not only for Ghana, but for the entire continent. Continent. That's the image one had. Complete letdown. But of course, that didn't stop me from doing what I had to do. Mm. And it, it wasn't something dramatic that I had to do, Soya doing. No. I always felt that everything I did professionally should advance what I believed in. Okay. Nothing else. So I began teaching law at the Faculty of Law. I was joined by Dr. Kwesi Bochi, mm. who would be to Dar es Salaam after I had left. Okay and was coming from there. And together we developed a course on um, legal aspects of international trade and investment. International trade and investment? Investment, yes. Mm. It wasn't in the curriculum, we developed it mm. from some Dar es Salaam material, yeah, which we have felt we had, yeah. yes. And taught that course at Legon jointly, Chris Bochu and I. And in teaching that course, which we were developing as we taught it, because we're not... Yeah, we're of course, we're there was never no premise absolutely. for it. precedence for it. didn't it. exist. We used real material because we were undergoing an IMA program as we spoke. Mm -hmm. So in discussing the Betty Woods agreements yeah. and the effect, we're the reality here. And you, you were... In, on the field with the relevant situation at hand. Absolutely. Drawing from the Daily Graphic and the Times and so on, mm -hmm. material for the classroom. I see. So it made our teaching very practical and very real. Mm -hmm. And our style of teaching was to engage the students to think for themselves and do things. Interestingly, that spirit caught on beyond our classroom, the one subject. Yeah. It attracted interested students from other departments and so on. I see. There were also some public lectures which were given by some of us who were more radical than most. In contrast to the establishment academics, the big ones, yeah. we took them on, challenged them physically, intellectually, at debates. Interestingly, by about the middle of the 70s, they've been silenced, the, the, the heavyweights. Oh, that sounds so interesting. Interesting. I mean, but they were open to it. They, Absolutely. They, they were engaging. Absolutely. They, 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 they used to lead the discussions. Yeah. But this time, every time they gave a lecture, somebody was in the audience. A young crop of uh, young crop, intellectuals. Including students, some from outside of, of campus. Oh, I see. Who raised a question. 
from their own lectures and create problems for them. So by the late 70s, there was much as a change. You call it the defeat of establishment uh, intellectualism <laughs> <laughs> in Ghana's universities. Is, won't it be an interesting uh, perspective on it? Uh, it is worth studying for its own mm. sake. Mm. Because it happened to coincide with the national political movements. Yeah, okay. For one thing, a champion did his coup d'etat against the Bouzia government. Yeah. I think 1972 or so. Yeah. Then by the middle 70s, he was looking to continue in power under what you call union government. The union government. The military and civilians in government. Opposed by many people. And the students took it up. The student groups then. On campus, on yeah. the campuses. Not just Legon. Okay. The result was that the political ferment which was rising on the campuses because of the left-right debates took on the battle of campus as well. And in those days, the National Union of Ghana student, NUGS, wasn't simply fighting for increased um, allowances and so on, but took political positions. And so the campus became a hotbed for some of these activities. Absolutely. And they are champion campaigning. But you were not a student. You were effectively I, a teacher. I wasn't. Uh, you, you will never find me doing any of that. <laughs> but our students took our ideas oh, I see. from the classrooms, public lectures, informing their own ideas. Oh, and they moved with it. Absolutely. They, they, they formed how they thought government should be, exactly. how the state should run, exactly. and how we should be engaging even the IMF and the other relevant institutions. And, and, and that is the important lesson which we tend to forget. Mm. What we could do as lecturers mm -hmm. was to help them open their minds mm. to different ways of doing things. But what they will do with it, you can't control it. That's true. It happened that at the time, it fitted very neatly into the anti-union government campaign. Okay. So the campus movement played a very important role indeed in the campaign against union government by a champion. Well, that's another story. No, I get I, I get the point, but it's, it's uh, w then I'm sure the government would have been not so happy with some of you too. Absolutely. Yeah, not. because certainly you are feeding the brains that's actually revolting or opposing. Perhaps it's plans to put together the system. Of course, we all know that it was defeated along the line. In the, in the end. But, but was there re repercussions to well, some of you or academic freedom right. in general? Interestingly, we were under very severe security checks. Oh, I see. But no attack. There was one incident mm. which, is, <laughs> which I find so funny. One of our students, Techua Menu. Yeah, oh, Professor Techua Menu. Right got a grant to go to Dar es Salaam to do her master's degree. And so I organized a party for her. Mm. And we stayed all night and so on. <laughs> we noticed that there was a security car outside parked there. Mm. And we were having a party. We went home. Yeah. It turned out that the report to the security agency was that there was a secret meeting in my house <laughs> that night. <laughs> Can you imagine? A secret meeting to foment more trouble. Guess what? But, but despite all of that, nobody came in. In those days, attacked any of us, despite our being politically, shall we say, uh, unfriendly. Uh, th that's an interesting development too. Different. I mean, there was respect for your. I mean, they disagree with you, or they even tried to, you know, intimidate one way or the other. But there wasn't real attacks on you. No. Was that respect for intellectual freedom? Yes. Was that respect for the sanctity of academic institutions and the right to free think around some of these matters? Well, it, absolutely. But indeed, um, there's one famous incident which illustrates that point. Mm -hmm. Uh, General Champo 
actually something happened and the and there was a dismissal of two senior medical doctors, mm -hmm. professors in the medical school. Okay. And the junior doctors went on strike and forced a champion for the first time to back down. Oh, I see. And in fact, that uh, junior doctor strike was one of the steps that exposed the you know, government idea and Achampong's regime. Mm. Achampong said that, oh, what is this? He dismissed the Chief Justice, he dismissed the University Vice Chancellor, mm -hmm. something, somebody else. No, 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 University Vice Chancellor. Um, the courts and the governor of the bank. Yeah. Nothing happened. But he dismissed two professors. And now this problem. Now if we are on strike. That's the point I'm trying to you were making earlier. Yeah. There was a, a certain holding back from interfering in the university's work, despite the power of the military government and our champion. So we all survived. Oh, so we all survived.